In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, dear faithful in Christ, today we celebrate the fifth and the last Sunday before the Ascension, Ascension, Ascension of our Lord, which we will celebrate on, on the Thursday. We remember uh, two Sundays ago we heard when Jesus Christ uh, talked to the Apostles at the Last Supper uh, a while and you will not see me and another while you will see me again. This was to prepare the Apostles for the immediate uh, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and then in the second meaning to uh, the leaving when he goes back to God Father from where he comes from and then the seeing again when we will see him for all eternity in heaven. Last Sunday we were considering the sacraments, the sacraments uh, which are the means for assuring the salvation for assuring the state of grace that those sacraments number seven are instituted by Jesus Christ himself and no one can change whether uh, name uh, nor uh, number because they build a perfect unity and they work for the salvation of human mankind as remembered not all of them are necessary for salvation uh, but all are useful for salvation and we also reminded uh, following the, the wish of the council to mention the importance of the apostolicity the church has four marks, signs, characters, which must be found in order to have the certainty of the true Catholic Church. Wherever one of those signs is missing, there the Church of Jesus Christ cannot be found and we cannot go there in order to achieve to get to receive, excuse me, to to uh, to receive the sacraments, and we have to avoid it. Today, our Lord uh, says the last exhortations and remembers some other important matters to the apostles in order to be able to be to become those doctors of the church for what they were uh, called for and therefore we want on the one hand uh, see on the on the epistle of saint jacob that our new life after resurrection in jesus christ has his duties and it said, he says that the faith antecedes in all everything. Nevertheless, the faith must be expressed by good works. If the faith is not uh, accompanied by, uh, by good works, uh, it's not the true faith, it's not the true Catholic. <clears throat> As we are softly constrained, so to say, to know of the faith, <clears throat> we have to study our faith in order to love our faith <clears throat> and to profess our faith. And we are obliged to do so because we, by St. Paul, 
when he writes to the Corinthians, we are reminded that there are many who will not remain in the faith. They will fall away. They will not resist the temptations because they did not consider the teachings of the church in order to take it in, to soak it in, to absorb it. And so it was a superficial uh, listening to the teachings of the church, but that did not, fall, uh, did not follow any works. And St. Jacob, he takes the example of the, of the mirror. Those men who only listen to the word of God is likewise a man who watches into the mirror with negligence, with no attention, and he turns around and immediately forgets what he has seen. All his imperfections in the face, he immediately uh, forgets and therefore is also not able to work on it. <coughs> this man who, don't, who listens to the word of God but then turns away and does not consider it, does not remember it, does not, does not ponder upon it, he is not able to correct his imperfections and every time he watches into the mirror, it's nothing else than watching his own imperfections. This Catholic, although, uh, however, who listens the gospel of God, and he remembers and he integrates the teaching of Christ into his life, he will remember his imperfections and he will correct it always more until a point where he will look into the mirror and there will be not found any imperfections anymore. Those are the saints who watch into the teaching of the church and they do not find any uh, uh, any uh, discrepancy. There is a perfect union between the teaching of the Church, between the teaching of Jesus Christ and their own life. This, my dear faithful, is what we are supposed to do. We are supposed to study our faith, to consider it, and then by make, putting into the practice the teaching of the Church, uh, uh, eradicating our own imperfections. And when we see regarding the good works, they are taking two examples and those are to visit the, the orphans and the widows, the widows, because those are symbolically presented as those who don't have protection and who are not able to care for themselves. And thus we see in the Catholic history, unlike to the modern church of the devil, the modern sect of the devil, the true Catholic church brought forth so many, so beautiful fruits of good works, thousands and thousands of sisters who kept care about uh, ill people in the hospitals. We have a huge amount of missionaries who were bringing the faith and not only to whole countries, to whole continents. We have orders instituted uh, specifically to uh, help those who are in the most need, to teach the, the children. We have kings, we have queens who 
did so many uh, good works to come to in 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 help for the poor. This is the true expression of the faith, and the true faith, the true love in Christ, always will find a way to express this immense love. In some way or another, he always is likewise pushed by the force of this immense love of Jesus Christ to, to express it. Yes, and we are also exhorted that we should be aware to conserve, to conserve the faith. And we should not uh, be envy of those false freedoms of the, of the world. This world enjoys a freedom which is not the freedom of Jesus Christ and which is not the perfect freedom. And therefore, we must not be envy when we have to spend time to drive to church and use time for prayers. This is the most uh, perfect uh, occupation of our time here on earth, from where we will get most uh, profits. In the uh, Gospel, we heard St. John when he uh, talks to the Apostles and he says, My Father loves you because you loved me. And we remember in this occasion, Jesus Christ many times told to the Pharisees and to the scribes that you don't know nor my Father nor you know me. Who knows me knows my Father. My Father and I, we are one. And we know they are one in nature. And therefore, he says, the Father loves you because you love me. And you recognize that I am from God. I am God. I am coming from the Father to where I will go back soon. And he, will, he says, ask Whatever, qualunque, whatever is your need, ask for it and it will be given to you. And this certainly is one of the greatest consolation we can have. We know that we have the assurance by Jesus Christ personally that we get everything we need for this life in order to uh, practice our faith and live in the faith. It means if there is something we don't receive, perhaps, or certainly, or we don't pray correctly and with intensity, or we don't just need it. Many commodities are better many times if we do not get it, because it would weaken us in our um, seal for the faith. And Jesus Christ, he says, yes, fin until now I was amongst you and you did not see uh, the importance of me as mediator. But now I am going back to my father and I am not in your visible presence. So you must realize I am I am, says Jesus Christ, I am the mediator and through me you come to, to the Father. And as we also read in other places in the, in, the, in, the, in the Gospels, God Father sees us in the mirror image of Jesus Christ. That means as much as we love Jesus Christ, as much as we are incorporated in Jesus Christ, as much we are loved by the Father and as much we can receive everything what is needed because we love the Father. And this, my dear faithful, I wish you to consider, especially in these times where many times we could uh, enter into desperation, but we should not 
We should remember those uh, promises Jesus Christ gave to us, to his disciples. And in this, we should insistently, insistently pray for the salvation. We should pray for our own salvation and for the others and that we get all the means in order to achieve this. This has always in union with the most perfect one, with the Blessed Mother of God, we ask all those graces, especially the, the, the gift, the virtue of faith, the hope and the charity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, blessed be Jesus and Mary, now and forever.